This lecture will introduce you to a generalized design process. Each major industrial sector, such as automotive, aerospace, shipbuilding, and so forth, have specific design processes they follow. In fact, each company within a given sector will have its unique and proprietary design process and methods. That said, it is important to have a general understanding of how products are conceived, realized, enter service, and are eventually retired and recycled. In this session, you will learn the role of an engineer as both the creator and consumer. You will learn the importance of following a design process. Let's begin. As an aspiring engineer, you are embarking on a journey to become a creator of systems and products. Let's explore some complex systems and products. This is an image of the Lockheed SR-71. It was designed by Kelly Johns Johnson and patrolled the skies for 33 years at a service ceiling of 85,000 feet or approximately 26,000 meters, twice as high as today's Boeing 787 flies. In fact, the pilots of the SR-71 were required to fly in a space or pressurized suit. It flew at Mach 3.3 or three, thir three and a third times the local or conditional speed of sound, or from New York to London in less than two hours. Most aeronautical engineers would agree that the SR-71 is one of the most amazing planes ever built, especially when one considers it went into service shortly after mainframe computing became a common engineering resource and long before computer-aided design or CAD was ever invented. This plane entered service in 1966. After graduating with my bachelor's degree in 1980, I joined the engineers at Lockheed. I was mentored by engineers who had actually designed the Lockheed SR-71 and the U-2. This is the Lockheed Nighthawk, or F-117 stealth fighter jet, another amazing aerospace system. It went into service the same year that I left Lockheed and went back to Brigham Young University to begin my master's degree. Its maximum cruise speed is Mach 0.92 or 676 miles per hour, and operates at an altitude of approximately 45,000 feet. Can you see yourself contributing to a design of the next generation aerospace system? Here is a picture of the B-2 stealth bomber. It was designed and built by, by Northrop Grumman in 1989 the year I started my PhD in mechanical engineering at Purdue University. Its maximum speed was Mach 0.95 and operated at an altitude of 50,000 feet or approximately 1,500 meters and could carry a payload of 200,000 pounds. Maybe you can envision yourself creating the next products and systems to carry mankind back to the moon, to Mars or beyond. Regardless of the industrial sector you choose for your career, you will find fulfillment and satisfaction in being a creator. If you plan to be an engineer who creates successful products and systems, you should commit to spending no less than 10,000 hours over the next four to five years studying the methods and tools used in, in the design process. 
This will help you become an outlier in the design community. Great design engineers also take on the role as the consumer. As an engineering consumer, you will constantly be analyzing the trade-offs between weight and cost, performance and cost, quality and cost, fit and finish, performance and robustness, as well as other critical product or system trade-offs. Engineers should be educated consumers, examining and re-examining before they buy. You will find yourself doing a cost to benefit analysis on every meaningful purchase. This is a skill that many great design engineers develop and nurture. They become their own best critic, not to mention analyzing and critiquing other co-workers' designs. The first step in becoming an outlier of the design process is to understand what the design process is. It is defined as all activities used to conceive, virtually formulate, analyze, test and refine models that meet or exceed requirements. Once the virtual model is completed, it proceeds to manufacturing product distribution, maintenance, and repair. Some engineers speak, as, speak of the design process as the embodiment of life cycle management. That is managing the design of the design data from its creation to its grave. This is a picture of the typical design process you will find in your engineering graphics or engineering design textbook. It is illustrated as a linear process, due in large part because all of the software tools industry has used for the past 30 years are single user, meaning only one engineer can have the model or data at any given time. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of design flowcharts. On the left is from a freshman level engineering graphics design textbook. On the right is from a junior level mechanical engineering design textbook. Notice they are quite similar in structure and how they proceed through the design process. Why should we devote time to learning the design process? The answer is quite simple. It leads to the development of successful products. Successful products continue to reinvent themselves via the design process. As an example, here is an image of the USS Nimitz. It was ordered in 1967. Five years later, it was launched. Three years later, after being outfitted, it was commissioned into service. Since 1975, the USS Nimitz has undergone 18 major overhauls in its 40-year service. I think most people would recognize these cell phones as the generations of the popular iPhone. It was first launched in 2007, and today, in 2015, we have the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Successful products keep reinventing themselves through the design process. All companies adhere to standard design processes because it is their roadmap for creating amazing successful products. This concludes our lecture on the design process. In part two of this lecture, you will be introduced to the seven steps or phases of the design process. 
I hope you found this lecture educational and informative. If you have not subscribed, please go to cadmodelinghub.com and subscribe so you will get all of the updates and announcements.